Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, smallest range covering elements from K lists. The idea is we are given a bunch of sorted lists that look like this, in this example at least, and we want to find the smallest range, meaning like a left value and a right value, which includes at least one element from each of these lists. So in this example, that range would look like this. So from 20 up until 24 inclusive, that would include 24 from this list, 20 from this list, and 22 from this list. If you try to make a smaller range, it's not really possible. You can try like zero through five, it works because it also includes four, but the length of that range is five, whereas the length of this range is four, so this one is smaller. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I have no idea how to solve this problem. Please ignore this part over here. But since I have no idea how to solve this problem, I'm just gonna ignore it and try to solve a simpler problem than this one in this video. So I'm gonna change the problem. Instead of having K lists, I'm gonna turn this into a leak code easy problem and ask the same question for two lists. What's the smallest range that we can find given two sorted lists? Keyword sorted. So let's just take a look at these two lists down here. I have no idea what I'm looking at, so I'm just gonna try to visualize this. I'm gonna draw these numbers out on a line. So I'm gonna have zero, I'm gonna have nine, I'm gonna have 12, and I'm gonna have 20. That's one of the lists. And for another one of the lists, I'm gonna have five and 18, and 22 and 30. So now that we can kind of visualize this, maybe we can at least think of like a brute force way to solve this problem. I guess a brute force way would be to consider every single range, including this element. I'm just picking it because it's the first one. How would you create a brute force solution with that? Well, consider this element and then consider every other element from the second list and then just find the smallest one. In that case, it's going to be this, and the length of that range is 5. So that's the smallest range that includes this point. Now let's do the same thing for this guy. I'm going to go through all of these guys, same thing, and I'm going to find that the smallest range, including a 9, is this one. It's of length 4 and I'm just gonna keep going. Now, even a dummy like me can figure out that there's some repeated work in this solution because now that I have visualized it, it's pretty damn obvious that if I'm starting at zero and I'm going through all the elements in the second list, as soon as I see an element that's greater than zero, I've found the smallest range, or at the very least, I mean, maybe there was an element over here that's like negative one. Technically, that wouldn't be possible in this example because we don't have negative points, but uh, you get the idea. This would have been a range of one. This would have been a range of five. But basically, once I get here, the first point that's greater than this one, why would I possibly go to the next ones? It's just going to increase the length of the range. So now that I've seen some of the intuition of this problem, and I'm familiar with an algorithm algorithm called the two-pointer algorithm, I immediately recognize that this problem can be solved with a two-pointer approach, not a brute force approach, which I guess in this case would have been like n squared, where let's say each of these is of size n. Now, the time complexity of the two-pointer approach is just going to be big O of n plus n, assuming they're of the same length, but maybe they're different length. So, you know, comparatively, the original time complexity would have been this. That's the brute force. Now we've made it more efficient with the two-pointer approach. And what would that two-pointer approach actually be? Well, initialize a pointer here, initialize a pointer here, get the length of that range, it's five. Okay, so our minimum range for now is five, and that range looks like this. I'm not gonna be explicitly showing you what the minimum range is, let's just keep track of the length of it and assume we have the range itself. So now, what 
should we do? We want to make this range smaller. Do you think we should take the bigger number and shift the pointer there? I mean, you could if you're looking for the maximum range, but I thought we were looking for the minimum range. So if we want to shrink this window, why not just take the smaller value and then shift that one? I mean, there's no guarantee that it's actually going to shrink the range because who knows, the next value could be really, really big. It could be all the way over here. But if we want to shrink this range, we have to shift this pointer. It's the only possible way. So let's try it. Let's move this pointer over here now. Okay, now the range is of length four. Great, we actually minimized it. That's pretty good. Now what should we do? Well, once again, just figure out which of these two is smaller and shift the pointer in that list. So now we would shift the pointer over here. Now the range is pretty big, so let's try to shrink it again. We'll take the minimum and do that. So this two-pointer approach works pretty effectively on two lists because it's pretty easy to find the minimum of two different elements at two different lists using these two pointers. Now, can this solution also be applied to multiple lists? Well, yes, it actually can. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna go through all of these lists and just go through the first element at all of them. Let's just put a pointer at all of these elements and let's get the minimum among all of those and the maximum among all of those, and that's gonna be zero, five. So that's our range currently. That's the minimum range currently, and that's the range that we're currently at, given that all the pointers are at the beginning. So let's try to do the same thing that we did earlier. Let's pick the minimum and then shift the pointer at that position. How would we do that? Because finding the minimum among k different lists is going to be a big O of k operation. So if we're doing it the brute force way, I guess we could do that. And technically, this approach would work. So now we have a pointer here, here, and now we're going to move it over here. OK, so now that we're doing that, we took the minimum and increased it. As we did that, it's possible that the next number is actually bigger than the max that we currently have, in which case we should update the max. Now, it's possible that this could have been smaller. It could have been like a two, in which case the max would not have been updated. In that case, we wouldn't change the max, but right now we will. So right now we will change the max to a nine. And now, is our range zero through nine? I mean, definitely not. Our range is these elements. So now among all of these elements, we have to recompute the minimum. Going to be an O of K operation, and it's going to be four. So we can update the minimum or our range to be four now. So this is our current range. Basically, as we go through all like the ranges, we can figure out which one was the smallest one. Like the length of this range is five. Eventually, we're going to get to a point, if I just quickly like simulate through this, where this is the minimum, so that's going to be shifted. This is now the minimum, so that's going to be shifted. Now this is the minimum, that's going to be shifted. Now this is the minimum, that's going to be shifted. Now this is the minimum, that's going to be shifted. And now 15 is the minimum, that's going to be shifted. Now 18 is the minimum, and that's going to be shifted. And for every time we shift, we're going to recompute what the range is. Right now, the range is 20 to 24. And we're going to realize after going through all the ranges, given this sort of two-pointer greedy approach, that this was the one of minimum length. So it looks like this approach does work. What's the time complexity of this approach? It's not a two-pointer approach. It's kind of a K-pointer approach. It looks like on each iteration, we're only shifting one of the pointers. When are we going to stop this algorithm? Let's kind of figure that out. So right now, we're here. We want to shift the minimum. So this is the minimum now, right? Because if we were to take this pointer and try to shift it, we're never going to make the range any smaller because that's not the minimum. We're only going to end up increasing the range. Our range right now is 20 to 24. And same thing with this guy. If we try to shift it, the range is only going to possibly get bigger or stay the same. It's never going to get smaller. So the only way to make this range any smaller is to take this pointer and shift it. But we reached the end of the list. We're going to try to shift it and we're going to end up out of bounds. So that's how you know we're done. When one of the pointers is out of bounds, we can stop the solution. We're done. It's the exact same as this would have been if we had just two lists. As soon as one of the pointers gets out of bounds, we're done. There's no need to really do anything more. So given that, in the worst case, we might pretty much end up going through every element in all of the lists. Just to make it simple, let's assume the total number of elements 
is of size n because each list could be of different length. There's no guarantee about the length of each list. So let's say there are n elements total. So that's how many iterations we're doing. And for each iteration, we're finding the max or rather the minimum among the k lists. So that's going to be n times k. Now, a very, very obvious optimization is that finding the minimum among k elements is pretty easy if you use a heap instead, a minimum heap. That can change the k complexity to be n log k. If you're looking for a problem similar to this, this is very reminiscent of the problem merge k sorted linked lists. So if you want to find a similar problem, check that one out. I have a video for that as well. So lesson learned here is that if you don't know how to solve a hard problem, that's okay. Just try to solve the easier version of that problem. Try to break it down into a sub problem and then try to solve that sub problem, collect the learnings from that sub problem, see if they can be applied to the larger version of the problem and see if there are any optimizations that you can then make. Because we couldn't use a heap when we just had two lists, but now that we have k lists, it's pretty obvious that a heap is going to be useful. So that's the idea. Now let's go ahead and code this up. I believe in terms of space complexity, it's going to be big O of k, but I guess I'll confirm that when we code it up. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is just get the length of the number of lists that we have. So taking the length of this will give us k. So we're going to use that in the context of this solution. Remember, we want to first just go through all of the lists. So I'm going to say for i in range k. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because we're going to need the index of each of the lists. So we can get the list itself now by this. I'm going to call it L for short. So nums of I now is the list. Among all of these elements, we want to get which one is the max and the minimum, because that's going to tell us like what our first range happens to be. So I'm going to put the range in two variables, which I'm going to call left and right. I could initialize these in such a way where the right value is really small and the left is really big so that we can min and max them here. But I'm actually just going to set them to the first element in the first list because that's a perfectly fine default value. And then as I go through here, I'm going to try to minimize the left. So just like this, left is going to be equal to the min of itself and the current number. So uh, the current list at index zero and the right is going to be the max of itself and the same element. So by the end of this loop, we'll have the first range that we have. Now, the next phase of the algorithm is going to be the heap part. So among now the frontier, all of the elements at the beginning of each of the lists, we want to find the minimum and then shift the pointer for that one. So we should initialize our heap with all of the elements that are at index zero of each of the lists. So why should we have a separate loop for that when we can just use the same loop over here? So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna declare my min heap up here. And then in here, I'm gonna say uh, heap q dot heap push to the min heap. I wanna push not only the value, which would be a list at index zero. That's what we wanna use for the key of the heap, but we also want that to be associated with like which list does this element belong to so we can shift the pointer accordingly. So we can say, okay, this belongs to the list at index i. And we can also say that for now, the pointer is at index zero of that list. So we're pushing this triplet. I'll leave a quick note over here. It's the min value and the index of the list and the index of the element in that list, or let's just say the index of n, and uh, I'll just call this n as well. I feel like these aren't very descriptive, to be honest. So I'm sorry about that. I just don't know how to name them better on the spot. Naming is hard, to be honest. So uh, let's continue with this. I'm going to initialize my result just to the first range, and we'll continue to update it accordingly. So I'll set it to left and right. And I'm not going to store the length of this range because we can easily compute it when we need to. It's just going to be the difference between these two. And now I'm going to a loop. And for now, I'm just going to leave the condition empty, and we want to return the result that we declared up above. Each time, we're going to pop from the min heap. As we pop from the heap, 
we're going to get three values and it's going to tell us the number within one of the lists the index that tells us which list does this element belong to and then third we're going to get the index of the element within the list again i'm sorry about the variable names I know they could be better. Um, but now that we popped this element, we want to shift the pointer associated with that element. So we're gonna say index increment by one. And of course, we're probably gonna push this back to the heap at some point. So we're gonna say this, uh, push the next element now associated here. So first let's get the next element. How do we do that? Well, we have that list nums. We know which list it's associated with, which is I, and then the index, the next index is this now, we already computed it. So here we can say that. And so this is the next value. This is the value we wanna push onto the heap. So we can say this, heap Q, heap push this element to the min heap. Now, remember the min heap doesn't store individual elements, it stores a tuple. So that's just the first part here. We have the element. I'm actually gonna reformat this slightly differently. We have that and we have I, which tells us the list it belongs to. And then we have the index of this element. And now we're good. And we wanna also update the left and right parts of our current range. Well, this tells us the result, but we also have two separate variables for the range. Remember how we're gonna do that? The right value could possibly have increased. Now that we have a new element, which is a part of our current range, this might have actually increased the range. So I could do this here, right is equal to max of itself and the next element that we just added to the current range. And since we're using this multiple times, I'm actually gonna break it into a variable. So I guess I'll just call it next val and then do something like this. Let's also try to update the left if we possibly can. How would we update the left? Well, we wanna know what is the minimum. And remember our heap actually tells us all of the elements that are currently in our range. So we want the minimum element in our range since we have a minimum heap anyway, it's another reason to use the minimum heap rather than just iterating over all the lists. So here we can say that left is equal to the minimum of itself and the minimum that's currently in the min heap, which we can get like this at index zero. And then from that tuple, we want the element. So we also do index zero. Now that we've updated our range, let's see if it's smaller than any other range we've seen before. So our smallest range is stored in the result. Let's see if right minus left is less than the result right, which is at index one, minus the result left, which is at index zero. If that's the case, update the result to be this. So we're pretty much done, but one thing is the condition of the loop. When do we stop? Remember, when we pop the last element from one of the lists, that means we're taking the index and trying to increment it one more position, but the element at that position does not exist. So it cannot be added to our current range and thus the current range can't be any smaller than what we've already computed for reasons I talked about earlier. And if that's the case, how would we detect that? How do we know if this is the last position in the list that it belongs to? Pretty easy, this tells us the list that n belongs to. So if we can say if index is equal to the length of nums of i, then we definitely shouldn't try to get the element at uh, that index because we're gonna get an index out of bounds. So at this point, we can just break out of the loop. And we're guaranteed that this is gonna execute at some point. So I'm just gonna put a while true here. We know we're gonna reach the end of one of the lists eventually. So we can leave this as a break statement, but we can also just put the return statement there as well. That's what I'm gonna do. Not saying this is like the best way to do it, but it does work. It's pretty concise. And I think like this is relatively readable. I think the biggest thing is probably just the naming. So if one of you has like a suggestion for a better way to name this, let me know. I'll give this a run. Okay, sloppy bug on my part here. Once again, I think I made this mistake the other day, but I'm gonna change this to an equal so that both of these get the same initial value. Okay, unfortunately, another sloppy bug on my part. I really apologize for this. So here, when we were updating the left pointer, if we set it to the minimum of itself, and the value in the min heap, well, it's never gonna increase. And it's not gonna be valid either because the value here might no longer be in the heap. It might not be a part of the current range. So what we actually wanna do is set left equal to the minimum value. Again, apologize for that. You can see though that the solution does work. It's very efficient. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.